So thank you for joining us. So apologies for the glitch, but we had to add all our translators on board. We have French and Arabic translation today for you. So thank you for joining Tadamon Talks. I'm Svetla Baev. I'm the communications lead with UNDP Europe and Central Asia. And I'll be moderating this session today. So Tadamon Talks, uh, if you're not aware, is a webinar series that explores alternative finance uh, for civil society empowerment. Uh, in our past series, we've explored insights and learnings on crowdfunding. Uh, we've looked into um, uh, good practices for civil society capacity building, and we've brought together prominent experts um, alter on alternative finance and crowdfunding platform uh, leaders. So this is an initiative that is powered by the Tataman platform. Um, it's sponsored by the Islamic Solidarity Fund for Development, and it's managed by the Islamic Development Bank and implemented by the United Nations Development Program. So if you're new to the Tatamon platform, um, Tatamon is a cross-regional community platform for civil society empowerment. So it's great to have you all here. Um, and probably you've been getting uh, our newsletters in the past uh, month. So today's talk is going to be about storytelling. And we're going to explore the elements of what makes a good story. And we're going to look at this, uh, why it's important to have storytelling within more broadly, but of course, also within the context of crowdfunding um, and why it's important and how to really craft that powerful narrative that we're looking for. Um, so before we start, I'd like to give first the word uh, to our wonderful partners at ISDB uh, for some short welcoming remarks. So I'd like to welcome Ismail Mohammed. He's the program coordinator with ISDB. So over to you for uh, a couple of words. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Isabella. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone here, uh, CSOs, the panelists, as well as uh, other colleagues that joined us today on this webinar. Uh, thanks for us accepting this kind of invitation. Uh, secondly, uh, I won't go through much. Uh, Tadamon Talks is, uh, as Isefla uh, pointed out, is established by the Tadamon team to help strengthen, simplify, and uh, coordinate the communication landscape for CSOs. In short, uh, we make it easier, uh, in fact, for CSOs, to pitch their ideas, uh, link with their target audience, and also build a compelling narrative story uh, to mobilize resources and campaign on uh, Tadam uh, platform. Uh, our mission here is to empower you, uh, to empower CSOs through attracting donors and also developing their talent to become sustainable. Uh, we make this happen. Uh, we are Tadam team. And we are here to help you unlock your potential. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Back to you, Seth. Thank you so much, Ismail, uh, for the wonderful remarks. And now we're going to get into uh, the heart of our uh, conversation today. Um, I'd like to welcome the key speakers in our Tadamon talks today. This is uh, first Zakra uh, Abdihagi. She's a poet uh, and the executive director at the Somali Storytellers. This is a multimedia communications community organization. They have a lot of experience in actually training civil society organizations uh, in the art of the um, digital storytelling, particularly within the context of crowdfunding, which um, of course is really important to us. Um, and she's gonna walk us through some of the key elements of what makes up a good story and give us some examples. And after that, we'll be joined by Sandra uh, Vlasic. She's a wordsmith uh, for systems innovation at UNDP. And she has a knack for, <clears throat> excuse me, she has a knack for uh, uh, copywriting and telling powerful stories. And she's gonna share some key insights and a really wonderful story with us today of what storytelling can look like. So um, just to let you all know, for those who have uh, joined us, we have, um, we're currently recording this session and streaming it live on uh, Facebook. Uh, so feel free to share it. Uh, and in the end, we're also gonna have time for a Q and A session. 
Um, but I would suggest that if you have questions that are popping up, feel free to drop them in the chat or in the Q&A box uh, as, as our presenters present today. And then we'll gather kind of what's the most interesting of those and uh, ask, ask the two speakers today. So thank you for uh, Zahra and Sandra for being with us today. And over to you, Zahra, who's going to kick us off in our webinar today. Thank you. Thank you all for having me here. Um, it's an honor to be here and discussing um, the importance of storytelling. My name is Zara Abdihaji. I'm the executive director of the Somali Storytellers. Um, so before I start my presentation, I would like to kind of start it off with a video um, to show you an insight of what we do and then continue with the, with the presentation. Thank you. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Welcome to the world of digital storytelling. My name is Dara Abdihaji, and I'm the executive director of the Somali Storytellers. I'm currently based in Mogadishu, Somalia. Today, I want to share with you how storytelling is changing lives and healing wounds in Somalia after decades of war. You see, peace begins the moment you change how you view yourself and others. In the context of Somalia, changing the perspective of people was not an easy task, especially on the digital media, where they often show the negative side of our country. This affected how we Somalis viewed ourselves and our choices in life. A lot of young people had lost their lives on dangerous journeys to search for better life and opportunities in other countries. Digital storytelling has paved the way of changing the narrative and people began sharing these untold stories, moments, places, and the beauty that existed within the ruins. We began to rise from the ashes with new innovation and stories of successful milestone achievement after the Somali Civil War. Our team at the Somali Storytellers are helping young people turn their pain into strength, healing through the art of digital storytelling as they learn to find, make, edit, and share their own stories through their smartphones or whatever device they have available to them. Join us as we change the narrative one story at a time. Follow all Somali storytellers' social media platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, to learn how to create your own stories by Okay, so um, thank you once again for having me. And uh, I will begin now my presentation about storytelling. Um, so first and foremost, uh, with Somali Storytellers, we started uh, back in 2020. And we were a group of Somali youth who came together to change the narrative, to conduct social awareness campaigns regarding social issues within Somalia and our communities at specific. Um, so we use storytelling to kind of like um, help us uh, address certain issues and use it as a tool in our daily lives to um, help us go forward as uh, Somalia slowly regains peace. Uh, and our teams, we, uh, we are based in Mogadishu, Hargeisa, Bosaso, Khardo, Karawe, which are different parts of Somalia. Um, look, sorry, let me do full screen here. So uh, before I get into it, um, you know, when you start something, there's always a plan you have to have um, before time. So when you hear digital storytelling, normally people assume that it's easy to just take the camera and go to the field and record something. But before you do that, there's always more work that goes into actually making the story and then, you know, filming. So there's a lot of paperwork where you have to first find out what do you want to tell, what stories do you want to share, and why do you want to share the story? What is the purpose behind the story? So um, once you have that figured out, and I'd like to talk this from a crowdfunding point of view, because um, uh, recently we did um, a training with civil society organizations along with Tadamon, who invited us over to um, help with the storytelling aspect. and. Uh, with the, with the CSOs, we made sure that they focused on first and foremost, what they are um, 
what their purpose was. Why are they doing this? Why do they want to start this crowdfunding campaign? And how are they going to share that through their stories? So I'll walk you in a bit about how to actually um, form your story. And, uh, and that's starting with first finding what story you want to share. And once you have that, we have a tool called the Story Canvas, which helps us map out our our story. So once you are organized, it's much better to actually go to the field and shoot it instead of um, just grabbing the camera and not having um, something to put out and uh, having a mean meaningful campaign. Um, so you start with your purpose. What is it that you want to do and your mission? What is it that you want to achieve? And again, why? Why do you want to do this? So I call this the golden circle. And this circle helps you figure out and plan out. So why, how, and what do you want to change? Um, another focus is who's your audience? Who is going to be watching this? Because um, your audience plays an important part um, when you're doing a storytelling video, um, especially for crowdfunding, who is going to fund your campaign? And uh, whether it's, um, you know, an, an older audience, whether it's a younger audience, I feel like everybody can take part in, um, you know, funding uh, your campaign, but you have to know who do you want to specifically target and what social media platforms are they using. There are so many platforms and each platform is different from the other. Um, so if you, for instance, want to do your campaign on YouTube, it would be a different approach, especially even like the the quality of the video that you want to produce or the length at the time. Um, there's also vertical videos, horizontal videos. And so you want to be more specific if you're doing Instagram, if you're doing Twitter. Um, so you have to find out which platform your audience mainly um, is at. And the other thing is that you have to make sure you don't say too much because then you'll say nothing because people will not really be into your um, your campaign if you're saying too much because too much information sometimes is overwhelming. So you want to be very specific um, on what you want to campaign about, what you want to discuss. Um, so also once you're, you're, you know, you have your story that you want to share and you know how, why, and what you're going to do, now there's the call to action. So um, what is it that you want your audience to do? So once you've done all of this and then you have your call to action, whether it's the crowdfunding, now you want people to step in and help with what you guys are doing. You have to show them um, what you will be doing as a solution and as a way forward as well, because people love to see what's going to be the, the future of this um, initiative that you're doing. Because um, if it's like a one-time thing where it's like, hey, I'm gonna be doing this and then that's it it's going to be a little bit you know, overwhelming and maybe people may not participate. Um, you have to think about people and places. Who do you want to be? Uh, who do you want to be uh, putting in this video? Um, who is going to be the face of your campaign? Who should be in that video? Um, so that's another uh, area to focus on. Um, also consider the elements of your story, the colors, you know, um, certain colors indicate peace, like green would be peace, blue would be more calming. So, you know, it, it takes a while. Colors also play a part and a role in translating what you are trying to portray. Um, so this is what I really like to um, actually focus on is the story structure. Um, as you can see here, um, it indicates uh, how the story will be starting. So the hook is the beginning where you slowly start um, what you want to, your story basically just slowly starts in the beginning. And this is a, a display of how a person's emotion looks like when they're watching the video. And it's not to say that, you know, you have to use this tactic as a way of, it's not a tactic, it's really about the cause that you're doing. Um, people have to feel what you are, you know, advocating for. So um, don't put too much information in the beginning, because that will also overwhelm someone and maybe they may not show interest in taking part of it, or it may be too uh, much. But just slowly start off and then you get into um, the story. 
and then what is like currently happening so as you see like the story structure goes up a slope and then once you reach like where what you are doing for this cause and what could be done this is where you include your audience as in their participation because people want to feel included so that's important to focus on you have to show them that they are also an important part of this um initiative that you're carrying on so uh it, it would be a more um joint effort instead of just uh showing that it's just you doing this it's like hey this is we are all doing this um and we all want to make change so and then that kind of gives them the call to the action what do you want the audience to do whether it's um raising uh, funds for your crowdfunding campaign, whether it's, um, you know, outreach on social media where you want more people to follow up with what you're doing, that's the opportunity for them to come in and step in. And then that is what helps your, your storytelling video um, become successful and reach a lot of people. So um, this would be very important to note um, and show them, like, you know, even the vision for the future. Um, so that they feel like they're included every step forward. Sorry, give me a second. Um, my screen is not moving. Maybe you can try to reshare it. Or... Yeah, yeah, maybe let me do that. Okay, uh, let's go back. Okay. So these are the elements you need to make your story. As I said, let's just slowly go back. So first you find your story, you make your story, then you edit your story, which the editing phase is a bit more, um, it's not difficult, but it's, uh, for the time being, because we don't have much time, but uh, there's different applications that we use for um, editing, which are free. Um, and what we like to focus on is the fact that you shouldn't worry about what equipment that you're using. You can use your smartphone, which is one of the things that we um, focus on is smartphone filmmaking. And you can share your story uh, no matter what device you have, because at the end of the day, it's the story that matters. What you're trying to convey is what matters. It's not the, the device or um, the heavy, expensive equipment that matter. You can use anything to make your story. Um, and uh, just make sure that you have a good sound quality. Maybe even if you don't have a microphone, you can use your headphones. Um, it's not important to have like an expensive microphone smartphone, a good editing um, smartphone, whether it's your phone or your laptop. Um, I think all these things are very accessible nowadays, which makes our job very easy as Somali storytellers to conduct awareness campaigns. Um, and then this is just one of the campaigns that I would like to share that we uh, have worked on. Um, and I also would like to uh, step in and also share with you civil society organizations that we've worked with that are currently conducting their campaigns as well. Um, so I'll turn this video on and this is a video we focused on to um, display the, the rights to education for girls. Uh, this is in the Somali language, but it also has Arabic subtitles for Arabic speakers. Um, so let me just share that as well. Next second. Okay, I hope. Uh, can see it. Malaygu 
شغاله ضم بخوتها صح ولا تقدر في عمق قطع اني يا ولاش نجح فعلى شقينا هول فعن كعونا شقد مخايا أنا هو عند قويك نجحنا وحقيقي نشاهد هو شاهد ذاته هاي سجال ضمع So this is one of the videos that we've done um, to promote girls' education here uh, in Somalia as well. And um, it, we, we had a lot of fun doing that video. The most important thing is to, you know, uh, be, you know, very passionate about your cause and um, dedicated to it. I guess that's um, one of the key ingredients to having a good story and also a successful campaign. Um, also, like uh, we've worked like I said before, we've worked with uh, Tadamon um, in the Somalia crowdfunding campaign in the storytelling um, aspect. And we've worked with a lot of civil society organizations who have um, done an amazing job in Somalia and uh, <clears throat> they're advocating for different causes. One of the ones I would like to highlight is um, Soivda, um, which is a Somali youth organization for volunteer and development. Um, and I think it's a group of doctors that came together to uh, volunteer on, you know, their free time to give medical attention to their community members. And their campaign focused around the area of um, helping street children um, recover from the streets because they are very neglected and they don't receive um, medical attention. They don't have um, you know, anything to eat or a place to stay. So their crowdfunding campaign was to advocate for those children and to, um, you know, get funds to help them get off the streets and find the, the, the help that they need. So we've kind of crafted with them how to form their story, how their campaign would look like. And um, they already started their campaign. They've launched their campaign although they are now um, starting to share these campaigns on social media. Um, I currently don't have the link for their video. I would have linked it, but um, they are doing an awesome job as well. Um, so I, I wanted to share that aspect with, um, with you all. Um, and so far, I feel like uh, with any civil society organization, storytelling is a major equipment or tool, a powerful tool at that to help your campaign go forward. Um, it all depends on your technique. It doesn't depend on your device or your equipment, and you don't need money um, to do your, your campaign. You just need a phone and a good story. And uh, I would like to turn this over back to um, Svetla, who uh, is going to continue um, from here on. Um, I'm done with my presentation, but yeah, uh, create a better future using the power of 
community-driven storytelling. And also remember to follow us on Somali Storytellers social media platforms. Um, I guess that's our call to action. If you are very interested in our work, um, you can find us on social media platforms. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sakra. Um, I think you gave a nice overview of or what a story uh, includes, uh, what are the different components. Um, if you have any links to some of the stories that you mentioned, feel free to drop them in the chat. I think it would be interesting for some of the participants here or even some of the videos that you shared uh, about the Somali digital storytellers. Um, so now I'd like to hand over uh, the mic to Sandra, uh, who's also going to share some insights, but mainly a wonderful story um, that uh, has a very powerful narrative. Uh, thank you, Svetla, and hello, good day to everybody. I'm really happy and thrilled to be here with 90, 90 of you together from faraway places. And I will share with you a story about a tiny island in the Adriatic called Zlarin. Okay. Now you see it well, the full screen of Zlarin, yes. right? Yes. Good. So it's the first creation island without uh, single use plastics. Let's see how. I just have to remove. Uh, okay. So the story ended up at the UN General Assembly, but it didn't happen overnight. And I will tell you a bit how. Every story starts with, of course, with love and passion. So it doesn't start on the island, but it starts with our love and passion about the sea and the oceans. And I'm pretty sure that many of us, many of you share this love about the big blue. But of course, there is, there is a threat to our love and that's the garbage, especially the plastics and especially the single use plastics. So this is how the city of Dubrovnik Old Port looks like when the sea gives us back what we are throwing into it. It's not nice, right? you wouldn't like someone you love to be uh, thrown with, with so much garbage and plastics. So we were building our story with what we love and what happens with what we love if we neglect it and if we do not behave. And this story started and was built back in 2017 even uh when the whole big narrative globally and especially in the eu uh, uh, around the single use plastics ban was just developing so we were dealing with with the with the issue and with the problem we were trying to understand it and to build the story around it and to see what we can do to find a solution so in croatia we are very proud of our sea. We are very proud of being a touristic country, but even 20% of our BDP directly comes from tourism. But we saw that we are covering our main resource with, with garbage and with the plastics. So uh, you have to do something around it. Also, uh, along with the, with the visual, with, with the photos and with sharing the issue and the problem, it's always good to refer to international organization and to some data. And at that time, it was the WWF uh, report about the plastics in the Mediterranean, and they called it the plastic trap. And it's pretty similar, unfortunately, with all the other oceans and seas around the globe. And I'm pretty sure you know about it. So we have our love and passion to the sea, and we have a problem. What can we do? We at TerraHub, it's an NGO in Croatia that I, I helped in co-funding back in 2016. We decided to put together an initiative and we called it Adriatic Plastic Challenge. Part of the initiative is something very obvious that we can do and it's the cleanup, but it's end of pipe solution and it's not always the best and the most efficient solution. You have to close the tap, not just to, to remove the, the flood, right? 
But still, there are cleanup actions on the shores, in the bays, or under the sea, and we connected with many local initiatives doing the cleanups. What else you can do, and uh, Zahra's uh, story was also about it, it's the education. The education is the real power. But there are various uh, means of education. One we picked up uh, in collaboration with many other organizations that you can see uh, on the logos at the bottom is the exhibition. It's a plastic garbage project exhibition from Switzerland that we brought uh, to Zagreb together with uh, Zona NGO and the Swiss Embassy and many other uh, partners. And it was pretty educational exhibition with a big pile of plastics at the middle of, of, of the exhibition space, which represents this uh, big truck of plastics that enters our seas every minute. And it's an exhibition of uh, made entirely from what uh, was, was taken out of the oceans of the sea, so out of the plastic garbage. Uh, it showed all the various forms it takes during the time when, it's, when it disaggregates and melts and turns into microplastics. It shows what it does to the sea life, to the birds and sea mammals and all the marine world. And the exhibition is really uh, striking. And everybody who visited it said, oh, I didn't know it's such a huge problem. It's horrible. We have to do something. Another way of powerful education is showing movies, films, documentaries. So we used a plastic ocean documentary and we showed it in several cinemas around the coast and also in, in Zagreb. Again, after the movie, you have a full room of silent uh, people completely shocked with what they've seen. Some of them even feeling sick. And it's really also makes you, it's very powerful. It makes you uh, willing to do something and to change it. And another powerful mean of education is going into the streets on the coastal cities and working with people, with children, especially children, because they, they like education and they bring home to their parents what they learned and they make their parents to change habits as well. In the education, you use different kinds of simple and, and visual materials like small brochures throughout the day without plastic on how you can make an island more sustainable, so little cookbook to a sustainable island. You always uh, try to offer some alternatives. Uh, on the right is another single use alternative that is not the best thing to do because the real solution is into making things reusable and uh, circular and reusing old things to, to replace single use plastics or single use items as such. So on the left is, is a funny example, not funny, but the example I like um, made of old curtains that you use to cover the windows. These are little bags to, to take to the grocery shop and to be able to weight the vegetables and fruit. And then besides the education and the cleanups, what you can do, you can try to play. So we put together an innovation challenge and we called everybody with a good idea on how to stop the flow of plastic waste in the Adriatic to apply to our challenge. We did it again together with many partners that you can see at the bottom. Uh, the, the key donor was the Volvo Adriatic company and our expert partners for, for the challenge itself, Berlin Startup Croatia and IBM, the design thinking team. So we got many good ideas. We selected the best 10 ideas. We invited them to the boot camp for two days in Zagreb. They were still working on their ideas to make them better. They pitched in front of the jury and the winner was the Zlarin Island team. So this was this is where the Zlarin Island story starts. On the right are the three uh, hearts and souls of the, uh, of the initiative, Anna, Ivana, and Natasha. And they were really 
uh, in love and passionate about the tiny island of Zlarin and uh, passionate about the thing that they want to change the issue of an island being covered with plastics. So Zlarin is a tiny island. It has only to a bit more than 200 inhabitants, but in the summer, there's tourism and then the number of people on the island grows to three or four or five thousand and each of them use plastic bags so uh, if they, they, they counted the amounts and it's more than 170,000 plastic bags per year that I used on the island for a very short time and then they remain forever because we know plastic remains in nature forever and eventually it, it goes down to the sea. So here is where the work starts on Zlarin. Uh, first, they put together um, a, a charter, uh, the Povelja Zlarin Charter, that was co-signed, but by uh, every important stakeholder in the value chain of the plastics on the island, the single-use plastics. So it was local shops, supermarkets, fast food, uh, restaurants, pizza places, also the firefighters, but also what was the most important thing, uh, the local tourism association and the local uh, governance unit called the, the Miesni Odbor. They were all behind the idea that they want to get rid of the single-use uh, plastics of the island. They developed, you can see, a nice uh, visual identity, Zazlarin Bez Plastike, the logo, and they gathered all the stakeholders around the charter on the island. They were developing also many educational uh, charts and material. You can see a big table put on, on the main place where you come off the boat on the island saying that there is a problem with plastics and what do we want to do? And there were several of, of these kind of charts around the island at the very visible uh, spots. They were developing tiny postcards, little brochures also that were given to the guests, tourists, but also to the whole the domicile people. Um, some of them were even in, in French and English as well because of the tourists. They were organizing different cleanup actions, but also they were organizing meetings with local communities and discussing how how they will implement the, the initiative of getting rid uh, of plastics on the island. They were again working with children, many educational, many, many, many uh, play like uh, uh, events with kids about the problems in the sea and how to tackle them. And also the film festival during the summer because movies and documentaries are also a very powerful way of educating and storytelling. And when you are the first island in the Adriatic to get rid of single-use plastics, the media get very interested. So they uh, attracted a very much attention from the media of all kinds. They were present in all kinds of, of uh, digital media, press, on the platforms, on TVs. And the team, I remember the team was annoyed because they had to uh, answer all the time on journalist uh, queries, but this is very important thing to do and never say no, no to journalists if they want to tell your story and to help you that your story flies. It also got out in some international media, so everybody heard about the first island in the Adriatic to get rid of plastics. And when you are the first, that's the story. But how it got to the president of Croatia is after this video, take a break from plastic that I would like to show you as well. Uh, let me just change. It's here. I'm leaving this last part so that you can see how many names performed. 
how many people uh, contributed to this video. And many of them are actually uh, known, known people in Croatia, like actors, musicians, uh, meteor meteorologists from TV. So well-known characters who helped also to, to transfer the story. And I just have a couple of more slides to wrap up. Just a second. So this video was actually the moment when the president of Croatia at that time, Kolinda uh, Graber Tarovic, made a call and said, uh, I, I, I can remember uh, very well that it was Friday afternoon, so very unusual moment to, to answer the unknown number on the phone, but I answered and it was like the president's office. And they said, we saw the video, take a break from plastic. We heard about the story of Zlarin. We like it very much. And the president wants to tell it at the General Assembly of the UN in September that year. So of course the, the project team was thrilled and we prepared everything um, that, that was necessary for the president's office. And she really took the story to the General Assembly. And she basically pleaded the, the world uh, that if a tiny island in Croatia can do it, then we can all do it. And we should stop uh, littering our oceans and seas. And this was a big push for the Zlarin team as well. They were really happy that they were recognized because it's not easy to do, no matter how the island is, is small, to do such a big switch into people's habits. So the story uh, really uh, got, I already told you, very, very much media attention. So it had in just four or five months, this first summer, almost 100 media hits, and the value of media space was 300,000 euro. And in another year, in another 10 months, is it got 300 more media hits and the marketing value of the space was uh, 1.6 million euro. And the whole project was mainly based on, on really small grants, like up to 10,000 euro, but a lot of work, love and passion of the Zlarin team and the passion of all the people who love the sea and who want to get rid of, of plastic and to solve the problem. So the team today still works. The, the, the island is still uh, active in its battle uh, with, with plastics, with single-use plastics. It also goes to the other islands around, to Archipelago without plastics, with the city of Šibenik that is a place nearby and many other organizations, uh, as well as Smilo, the Sustainable Islands French organization, working with the island on, on some other uh sustainable ways of living so basically the story never ends but we can sum it up like what to do so you build the story around love you start from the problem so what jeopardi jeopardizes it what was was the threat to your love put it in a wider context work on a mix of solutions because it's never about just one thing and it's about the uh, work and a lot of work and about telling all the time, what are you doing? So a lot of telling and showing. It's about being visual, using photos and videos and, and uh, drawings. It's about including and engaging people, you know, and you don't know about local people and engaging them to tell their story because they are genuinely interesting into the solution. You have to be patient, you have to be persistent. So it's a result of a two or three year of, of building up the story. Uh, you have to celebrate the small wins and also the big wins will come. So you will celebrate again and you have to show and tell a lot. Thank you. This is the end of, of my presentation here. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, really, really wonderful example of uh, where a story can take you um, and how far it can go. Um, because when done well, uh, you'll be able to really attract uh, partners, engage communities. Um, but this is also, it doesn't happen by itself. Like you said, it's a lot of work, work, work. Um, and there's some, so now we have a bit of time for some Q&A. So if um, there's some questions that are streaming in uh, in the Q&A chat box, 
um, and I'm going to post some of them. I also have also a question for, for you, uh, Sandra and Zakara. Um, but for all of you listening in, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box um, and we can read them out, read them out to uh, the panelists. So um, one of our participants, Fatima said, um, so uh, storytelling is super important when uh, persuading people to change their thoughts, their behavior, their lifestyle, to uh, adopt new behavior. Um, how do you manage to reach this stage? Like what is, what is your um, takeaway from, especially like Sandra, your experience with this campaign? Like what, what, what does it take to reach uh, the stage of changing behaviors? And Zakhara, also feel free to tune in um, afterwards. In, in our case, and it's mostly about the Zlarin local team, it means being there with people and showing them how they can change and being really persistent. And it's really extremely difficult. It's not easy. So you have to educate them to show them why, to make them understand the why and help them to find the way how. So in, on Zlarin Island, it was offering alternatives, offering uh, ways how to do things differently, um, being persistent and being helpful and uh, answering all the time the same questions or uh, being able to hear many criticism, but still being persistent and showing them when there is something good, celebrating it because people like to be praised, same as, as the kids. Uh, and thank you so much, Sandra. Uh, Zahra, do you wanna chime in? Or you can take another question. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, in addition to what you were saying, I mean, um, it's a very interesting conversation because changing behavior is ultimately one of the hardest, hardest goals that um, you can have in a campaign. And you often have to look at uh, campaigns as something very long term and having and doing lots of different things as part of that campaign, lots of activities that lead up to that goal. Um, and um, I think what Sandra mentioned was is a really important point, really focusing on um, in your in your narrative, really focusing on what alternatives you're. So you're not only saying what the problem is, but you're actually offering an alternative uh, to that problem, a solution um, that you're offering people to do. And in, 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 in any kind of communications, it's really important to have that. Um, offer that solution to people so that they know once they're they're engaged and inspired by a story by the story that you're telling they know where to focus their energy on they know what to do with that energy that you've given them through your through your inspiring story uh, so if there's any other questions let's... there is a question if I may uh... Ahead, What's yeah. the connection between uh, Euro and media hits, right? Well, usually uh, it's not easy to get in the media and the media space has its value. So many uh, companies, uh, it's, they have marketing budget and they pay to get in media, right? To get on, on TV or on radio or in news or on digital channel. Here, we didn't pay for it, but we earned it with our good story and with example and with being the first. So when you count your media hits, there is this uh, advertising value of media space that you basically earned. You didn't spend money to it. That, that's the connection between the number of media hits and the positioning and the value in euro of the budget earned or not spent for media. That was the link. Thank you. So um, in terms of storytelling, we have some participants that are asking, like, what are the types of digital media channels that they can be using to tell their stories? Uh, maybe, Zachary, you can take this over. Sure. Sorry, I had a little bit of technical problems. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see me, but um, it all depends on like your audience at the end of the day, um, who your target audience is. If you're targeting maybe um, international organizations that uh, fund these um, initiatives, 
that can help you with um, your crowdfunding campaign or your storytelling um, campaign. Um, they mostly the, the platforms we use uh, to get those messages out and maybe even like get to the audience that we want that can help us with this initiative. Mainly Twitter is the best uh, place. And um, if you're looking for like a young audience to share your initiative and um, help your campaign go very well as well, Instagram is also another great platform to use. Um, that would be my suggestion. And depending on even your area, I guess, which is the most popular social media outlet, I think it varies from um, different areas. But here uh, we have mainly if I'm targeting young Somali people, I would probably reach out on them to um, maybe Facebook. They use Facebook a lot. And um, also TikTok, which is a new popular um, platform, even though it's not as successful for uh, social media crowdfunding campaigns. But if I'm targeting Somali youth, um, that would be my platform and maybe even engage in what they find interest in to get my message across. So it depends on the area you are at and your target audience. Um, I think that would help a lot. Thank you so much. Um, actually, I have a, a, a question for both of you. Um, so often nonprofits, um, when doing storytelling, usually put themselves forward in the center of the, of the story, um, when perhaps they should be talking about um, the people that they're working with or about the communities that they're representing or, or the communities that are actually working on the problem. Um, so how can we help, what would your advice be to organizations trying to identify and elevate these inspiring stories? Where should they start uh, doing this? And what's the benefit for them? Um, why should they maybe step away from the limelight and give, give, the, kind of give the podium to um, other messengers and other speakers? I think I'll let Sandra go first. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, in, in a way, this is exactly what, what we did as Terra Hub. We were never in, in the front line. It was the local Zlarin people and Zlarin team. So the island was in focus because it's their story. And the NGOs are usually only helping, facilitating, boosting, pushing, trying to find the, the, the funding for the local team. And that's, that's how we, we functioned here in our case. And this is what we usually do. We are never in the, in the first, first side and the first row. It's the matter of ego as well. But uh, I think uh, like the real story is with real people in, in a real city, in a real place. So if it's not my personal story, I shouldn't be in the front line, but the people whom I'm helping to get their story out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so there's some questions in terms of, for example, what approaches to storytelling are more powerful, uh, like verbal, visual, um, like m movies, which is also visual. Um, you know, what, what, what in your, your, uh, in your opinion are more powerful storytelling methods? Um, so for me, I would approach maybe like reality because it's it's about um like the the issues real life issues um and when you talk about a real story versus um a lot of the times movies are based on real stories but then again it's like um there's actors involved and it's not as um it's not as concrete as finding a real story I think it is a good approach, but I, I, I personally, I would go for um, a real life story um, based on, you know, a social issue that maybe we are dealing with and then um, show people the solution, what we can do and um, how we can do that together and what the future is like. Um, that would be the better approach personally for me. Um, and if I can touch a little bit about the previous question as well. I also had an input. Um, I think a lot of the times it's important to step away from the camera and share the stories of other people because um, I guess it's like if you're always the center of 
the whole initiative. Um, it's more about you. It's not about your cause. It's not about what you are trying to convey. It's about you. So it's best to give um, the light on the people that it, you know um, involve the stories. Like I, I previously mentioned in my presentation as well, people and places matter. Um, who you, your your story is about. It matters a lot in how um, your campaign will go forward. If you make yourself the center of your I think perhaps Sakura had some technical issue and dropped off. Um, yes. Um, maybe just one last question um, about uh, how to perhaps uh, evaluate and monitor, you know, how our stories are coming across. Um, yeah, maybe that's th this is the last question that we'll be uh, taking for today. What are some of the tools that we can use to evaluate whether our stories are having impact? Hmm. It's it's uh, basically that you need to to try to evaluate uh, the change in the local community that the story initiated or, or affected or contributed to. So it's always complex, it's not easy. It's not enough that you count how many times you got uh, in media and how many media hits you have, that's one part. But the more, more important part is basically the field and the change in the community that you helped to happen. And there are all kinds of different measurements of social impact, environmental impact, economic impact, and, and the mix of the three. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for example, just looking at your uh, story, the campaign, um, you know, some things are, that could be thought of as impact are how more volunteers uh, joining in our activities or, you know, more, pe more initiatives being inspired to, um, from the local community so but this is longer term impact and it is very hard sometimes to to track but it is uh, important and is there um so uh thank you to sandra and zahra uh we're just going to do before we drop off today we're going to do a uh, group photo <laughs> for tatamon talks um and uh, I'd like to ask everyone who's joined us today and stayed with us until uh now to perhaps put on their cameras so that we can take a group photo uh, in the next one minute. Um, it's, and it's been really exciting. Some of you have, um, whoever, whoever can open up their cameras, that, that's great. Um, our team is gonna take a photo now. I think we got it, it's a wrap. <laughs> Um, so thank you for everyone that's joined us. Um, a lot of you also shared some of their experiences with storytelling in the, uh, in the chat, which was um, really interesting to see how you're using storytelling on some really difficult issues around uh, child marriages um, and the different social programs that you're organizing. So thank you for, uh, for sharing those. Um, and just to let you know, so that um, our next Tatamon Talks will be in uh, July, so next month, it's going to be on uh, the topic of crowdfunding in Africa, so we'll be joined by a group of really wonderful um, experts, uh, representatives of crowdfunding platforms uh, in that region, um, and they're going to be telling us a little about how their, uh, how their platforms are working, some of the obstacles, some of the tips on how to launch better campaigns uh, in the African region. Um, yes, so that's all from us. And of course, we'll be sending up a following a follow-up email with a kind of an overview for today's session and some of the link and the links to the recording. So thank you everyone for joining and see you next time next time bye bye. bye 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 thank you for having bye. me thanks bye bye enjoy thanks. thank you bye bye All right. enjoy your day or right. bye bye See you later thank you so much ismail